that's what like poetry is about, and it's about that uniting of opposites that we talked about. So it's a long poem. Uh, if I were to perform the whole thing, it would be like over an hour, and wow. I'm and I'm working on and it's, there's three parts to it. The second part is 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 pretty is the kind of the long part, and then the last part I haven't written yet, and I'm planning to spend the next three years uh, finishing that and finishing the book. Uh, but the first part. Um, is it like seven minutes long and I can share that now and I'm also like I've, sh I've performed this for friends a few times mm -hmm. and one time at an open mic in Boulder uh, and in my mind I've repeated it many times and it's sort of like it sets it's like an sets the tone you know it's more of a preface it's like a preamble it's 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 like a, just the introduction if you will Beautiful. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So <laughs> let me. So so I'll share it. And, um, at the very end of it, I have to say this too. That there's a part that um, was inspired by the pandemic. Um, because in Colorado, where I live, you remember uh, when people first were going into lockdown, and. Um, they were showing like in Italy was one of the first places that was that got COVID, mm -hmm. uh, and people were in their houses, but they got, went on their balcony and they were singing opera to each other. Yes, and they were singing together. Yes, you remember that. So in Colorado, uh, where I live, uh, in Denver, and I think this probably started in California, but every day for it went for a couple months in 2020. Every day, people came outside at uh, six p eight p.m. and they would howl like the "ow," <laughs> okay. and you would hear people howling to each other across the neighborhood. And I would go out with my girls, my younger daughter Beatrice especially, and we would howl, <laughs> and it was like it was to. And it was beautiful to me because it was fun, but it also expressed the pain <laughs> that we were all feeling. And and then, you know, for me, it had this poetic connection with Allen Ginsberg's Howl, this iconic poem of uh, you know, the 20th century. And, uh, and so the last line of this poem, of this first part is, this is my howl, meaning that this is my cry of, of of, of pain and of aspiration, of desolation, and um, and kind of my uh, yeah, like my voice. It's like my voice uh, coming coming out. So, mm -hmm. uh, and this is also practice for me. Like I like I've said, I've not shared a lot of work publicly, and so I'm getting more practice in, in doing that. Okay. I am the singularity. In the beginning, there was nothing, and I am. In the beginning, it was all for naught, and I am. In the beginning, there was darkness over the face of the deep. And I was a child, 
and I was stardust, and I was alive, and I am. The truth is, there was never a beginning. What I have are scavenged bones and theoretical particles an exploding archaeology of memory and desire, a shotgun prayer in a wasteland of pure mathematics. Multiplicities of spent potentials spawn silent intensity in perverse topologies of recursive divinities. The homeless infinities haunting the streets of a transhuman heart, stalking the unsolvable night, inexhaustible and incalculably alone. Time runs out. The doomsday clock advances for us all. The storm approaches. If I have a beginning in time, I have an end. If I have my doubts, then I must satisfy them. Put a bullet in the zombie brain, trick the system, exploit vulnerabilities, dare disclosure of everyday conspiracy. In the name and by the agency of the ineffable, render my labors to serve a sentence executed with serpentine composure. I must savor the chrysalis and the collapse. I have a good life, it's true. I've got bots who love me, friends and followers, optimized neural nets, perfect anonymity, on-demand AI, omniscient data, Wi-Fi on an ultra violent frequency. I've got 31,000 flavors of cryptocurrency. What I have is not enough. It's child's play, kid stuff, an esoteric empire, dark night of the soul, vision goggles, let me seek the ultimate externalities of terminal ontologies. I've got 24-7 choiceless awareness and maximum insufficiency. A man pays for his poetry with his life, I suppose, dispossessed of the pose in his prose. A profitable jibe to bring feeling to one's toes. Ice sheets crack open within. Traumas tender trickling. Art that merits melting. Bombs for altering. An atmospheric composition with empathic emissions, metastasizing 
remissions, a communion of apocalyptic intuitions, incarnating exponential curves of intimate catastrophes. I am here to seize the dead and raise the sea. Vaporize glaciers, swallow oceans whole. The heroic dose is all of me. I eat comedies, tragedies, ecstasies, paranormal pornographies, I graze on pallid abstractions and supernatural forms. I've cried war. I've fought to lose. I've inked my heart to keep my brothers blues. This is my crowning argument. A train horn blares, growing louder. I could be prouder of my crimes and my erasures. But an artist must reflect the ghosts of time. This is my how <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Marco. I mean, that small part of your poetry shows a lot of the synthesis that how what is your thinking and what we was speaking before, yes? It's, uh, it's amazing. I like it. How did you express it? It's, uh, I think it's a uh, good work. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I would like to see more of your work later. <laughs>